Well, if you have your Bibles, really quickly turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> chapter 1. Scroll down to verse 18. Man, this is good stuff right here I'm about to share with you today. This is really good stuff. Ephesians 1, chapter, verse, chapter 1, verse 18. Praise God. Here we go. I'm going to get it together. I'm going to get it together. I'm, I'm really excited that Jesus is alive. And because of that, I'm alive with him. Now, this is the Apostle Paul, and he's speaking to the church of Ephesus, by the way. And, and here's the thing we've got to understand. This is the living word of God. This is the living word of God. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So it's just as relevant today to us as it was for them back then. Amen. We got to read it as such. We, we need to glean from it as such. We, we need to, to seek it and hunger and thirst after the word of God. So this is the Apostle Paul. And this is what he says. He, he says, I pray that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in, someone shout in, in, in his people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same power that rose Christ from the grave. It's the same power in us that rose Christ from the grave and seated him at the right hand of God the Father in heavenly places far above all rule, all authority, all power, all dominion, and far above every name that will ever be spoken, not only in this present age, but also in the age to come. Jesus is greater than anything you'll ever face in this life. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. And I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would flood this place, continue to touch our hearts during this time. I pray that God, your, your spirit would soften our hearts, that you would enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we could know you better, this incomparably great power that lives within us. I pray that. I pray for a revelation of your resurrection right here today on this Easter Sunday, on this Resurrection Sunday. Reveal it to our hearts in a brand new way, Father, I pray. And let us leave this place having a resurrecting faith a faith that can speak to dead things and call them to life. I pray that for each and every one of us here today. Holy Spirit, draw us closer to Jesus today. I pray that you would take us from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory in Christ. And I pray all that in Jesus' name and all, all God's people said. Amen, amen. Listen, before you're seated, I want you to hug three people because it took him three days to raise again from the grave. So I want you to hug three people and say, he is alive. Tell them, say, he is alive. He is alive. Come on. <clears throat> well, happy Easter, everyone. It is Resurrection Sunday, and man, I'm so excited about it. <clears throat> and look, not only am I excited that it's Resurrection Sunday, but I'm also excited that it's Giving Sunday, man. I'm telling you, I love when I get the opportunity to give to what the Lord has asked me to give to. So what an incredible day to be a Christ follower, right? To be a part of what God is doing on the earth and more, more specifically what God is doing in our community through our church family. It's, it's amazing, amazing time, man, to follow Jesus. And, and I have to be honest, man, I'm really looking forward to the giving part of, of today's service so that we can come and bring our offerings to the Lord for Tyrone Christian Academy that we will be launching this fall. And the reason I'm so looking forward to it is because I love when God invites us on a faith journey with him. I love it. And here's why. Because it gives us an opportunity to please him. See, the Bible says this, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We can be all nice and good and happy, all that stuff. But 
It's impossible to please God without faith. And listen, this school is only gonna come about because of faith. (laughs) It's not gonna be because we know every answer or because we have every right connection. It's gonna be because of, of faith, because we've put our trust in the word of God. Listen, the Bible says that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. And because God spoke the school to us, now we're operating in faith saying, okay, God, we're gonna trust you to bring this thing to pass. We're gonna trust you. See, he's inviting us on this faith journey with him. And so I'm really excited about this this giving Sunday. And I'm excited that it's landed on Resurrection Sunday because both of these things require faith, extraordinary faith. And so, man, I hope you guys came ready to give. And I also hope you came ready to receive this morning from the Lord because I I, I believe I have a word from God. Um, and before we get to the, to the giving, man, I, I really believe God is wanting our hearts to, to be ready to start receiving from his word, receiving his promises. And, and man, I, I'm believing that today the Lord is, is wanting to reveal a resurrecting faith to each and every single one of us. And, and yeah, that is really good, actually. But, and so that's the title of today's message a resurrecting faith. And look, the first thing that we've got to establish here this morning before we go on this resurrecting faith journey is this, that everything in this life starts and ends with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everything. See, every single issue, every single problem, every single blessing starts and ends with the resurrection of Jesus. Every single one of them. See, something that we've got to understand is the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the answer for everything in this life. Everything. I'm not leaving out some things. Every single thing in this life. See, Jesus makes this statement, John 16, verse 33. He says, in this life, you will face trials of many kinds. But what? But, but take heart because I've overcome the world. And and what he's very simply telling us there is this, that yes, in this life, you're gonna run into all kinds of terrible trouble. You will. To say it maybe in a more candid way, Jesus is saying, man, that sometimes we'll come up against things in life and those things just, they suck. Like I'll just, I'll be real honest. These things that we encounter, these things that come against us and fight against us, man, at times those things just downright suck. There's not really a better way to say it and you know, look, maybe you're holier than I am, but I like to call a spade a spade. And man, I've dealt with real life problems and I've helped people walk through real life problems and a lot of times those things suck. There's not a better word for it. And look, Jesus right here is, is telling us, look guys, look, life will be very difficult at times coming up against you, but you can take heart. In other words, your heart can rest easy. In other words, you can be full of peace and you can be full of joy. Your joy may be complete because I've overcome every single one of those those problems. What he's saying is, is, is through my resurrection, you can have, you can have peace, you can have joy, and you can have power. Through my resurrection, you can have peace when turmoil surrounds you. You can have joy when sorrow tries to overwhelm you, and you can have the power to make it through every single one of those things, and not only make it through those things, but actually you will come out better than when you went into those things. See, only, only Jesus can do that. And this is what Jesus is trying to get across in John chapter 16. Matter of fact, he's trying to get it across throughout the entire, entire Bible. My resurrection will give you the power to make it through everything you will ever go through in this, in this life and be better because of it. It's unbelievable. Like, like, listen to me, listen. There's not one thing that Jesus did not overcome while he was on this earth. There is not one thing, you can't name one thing that he didn't conquer while he was on the earth. And guess what? He never, ever lost a battle, never. 
It's not like he dealt with most things or like 95% of the problems he addressed and dealt with. No, no, no. 100% of the problems this life brings at you. Jesus is the answer for it. His resurrection dealt with it because he overcame everything that the enemy tries to throw at us, that this, this weak, fallible flesh tries to hold against us. And that's why you and I, man, we can have hope today and we can have joy today. This is why you and I can make it through this, this life, not unscathed, but better because of the trials that we've, we've walked through. And that's why you and I can be confident in this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will see it to completion. He'll complete it. His resurrection is the answer for all of life's problems and all of life's blessings. But, but you know, so often we find ourselves struggling in life. We do. Why? Why do we struggle so bad. And look, when it comes to this issue of struggling through problems, I'm like Paul in First, First Timothy chapter one. I'm the chief sinner among all of you. <laughs> because man, I tell you, when, when life comes crashing down around me and dealing with all kinds of things that's happening around me and to me and, and all these different things, my flesh and the enemy is, is throwing at me, man, I can find myself really struggling through difficult times. I, I get depressed, I'll get anxious, I'll feel completely overwhelmed, where it really feels like, man, I just kinda wanna lay in the bed and not even get out of the bed. Like, I don't even wanna walk out that front door because I don't even know what's gonna happen because every other day I walked out that door, I got my butt kicked. Maybe I'm the only one. And you know, th this past week was just one of those weeks, man. Like, wow, Lord, what is going on? And so I was talking to Jesus about it, right? And how many of you realize that you can talk to Jesus about anything and everything you're going through? And listen, you might as well be honest with him exactly how you feel. Like, don't give the canned answer you give to all of us. Like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm great. Everything's beautiful. And your life is miserable. Like, I'm just saying, like, don't give him the canned answer. Everything's great because he knows the truth of it anyway. So you might as well just be completely honest. God, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm feeling. And I don't like it. And I'm sick and tired of it. And so I was, I was talking to Jesus about it. And I was saying, Lord, why, why do I struggle so hard? Why, why, do I, why do I get depressed? And why do I get anxious? And why am I having such a hard time dealing with, with all of these problems that life is throwing at me? And, and you, know, you know what he said to me? This is what he said to me. He said, you're dealing with all these problems because you have a lack of revelation of my resurrection. See, see, the Lord come right up my throat. Like he wasn't gonna pat me on the back and say, honey, it'll be okay. No, 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 no. The reason you're having these problems is because you have a lack of revelation of my resurrection. He said to me, you need a resurrecting faith. See, I, I think way too often when we think of the resurrection, we think of it only in past tense. That's what we think of when we think of the resurrection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah, Jesus, yeah, that guy, yeah. He rose from the, from the dead. And we think it sounds pretty good and it sounds really cool. Like a guy raised from the dead, wow. That happened all the way back then. It's amazing. But see, the resurrection is much more than some past event. The resurrection continues to happen to this very day, every single day. His resurrection has to be the revelation in which we live our everyday lives. Because through the lens of resurrection, everything else in this life pales in comparison. Everything else pales in comparison. Through the lens of his resurrection, we can believe God for anything and everything that we're asking of him. We can trust him with all the things in our lives. We can just give it over to him. Through the lens of, of, of resurrection, we can believe God is the God of the impossible, that anything is possible through him. If he can do that then, oh, I believe he can do it now. 
I believe he can do it right now. See, see, God's trying to get us to this place where we live our everyday lives with our eyes fixed on the resurrection of Christ. With our hearts filled with the power of resurrection. That, that's what he wants to get us to that place. But see, we just so often, men, we, we think about the resurrection as, a, as something in the past that, that happens when it's much, much more than that. I want you to think about this just for, for one second. Think about this just for a second. Jesus gave his life as a living sacrifice. The Bible says that he was beaten to an inch of his life. Matter of fact, it says he was bruised for our transgressions. He was beaten for our iniquities, that he was beaten unrecognizably. You couldn't even make out who the man was. He was beaten so badly. And if that wasn't enough, they stuck a crown of thorns on his head to mock him as king. And if that wasn't enough doing that, all that to him, they stuck him up on a cross And they hung him there with big metal stakes going through his hands and through his feet. And if that wasn't enough, just for good measure, they took a spear and jabbed it in his side. And the the word of God says, this is where blood and water flowed. Look, if you and I were eyewitnesses to the resurrection or to the crucifixion, if we were eyewitnesses to this crucifixion, we wouldn't have been able to handle it. We wouldn't have been able to take it. It was that gruesome. It was that awful. We would have screamed and cried ourselves into complete exhaustion because our hearts would have been completely broken to see that happen. And and you know what's incredible to me? He went through all of that to show us his love for us. It's absolutely amazing to me. The Bible says in 1 John, it says this, that God proves his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, he, he proves his love to us that while we were still sinners, Christ went to that cross for us, took that beating for us, for you and for me. He, he went through all that to show his love for us, to show that he desires us to live our lives for him, to give our lives fully over to him and not in some wishy-washy way where we come to church on Sunday, but live however else we want to live Monday through Saturday and then come back, re- rinse and repeat and do it again on Sunday. No, 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 no. That's not the power of the resurrection. He did all of it so we'll fully give our lives to him. Being set free from sin. And and what's wild too to me is the fact that Jesus allowed it to happen. He allowed this to to take place. Why? So that we could be forgiven. So that we could be forgiven and spend eternity with him in heaven. And I love what he says in John chapter 10, verse 18. He says, no one takes my life from me. He says, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, but guess what? I got the authority to raise it right back up. It's absolutely amazing. Matthew chapter 26, he says to Peter, don't you realize this? Peter pulls out a sword and smacks the high, high priest's servant, Malchus, slaps his, just cuts his ear right off his head. Wow, I got you, Jesus. Like, like the king of kings needs protected from little old us. But whatever, not the point. I do like the, I like, I like Peter's moxie. You know what I mean? I'd like to think I'd have done the same thing. But whatever, he got rebuked. Jesus looks at him, I get rebuked a lot too. But Jesus, <laughs> Jesus looks at Peter and says, whoa, 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 don't you, don't you get it? I could call on my father right now. All I gotta do is say the word and my father will send 12,000 angels to wipe everybody out, to save me from this. And and why do I say say all that to say this? Don't get it twisted. Nobody took Jesus's life. He freely gave it and laid it down for you and for me. That's why he did it, so that we could live forgiven and set free. He did it for us, but guess what? After, After three days, he got up out of that grave. Defeating death by death. How awesome is that? I just love that. He defeated death by death, meaning he took what the enemy meant for harm and he used it, guess what, for our good. Again, again, it's his motto, it's his MO. Did it for us again. 
Matter of fact, the Bible says this, if Satan would have known the glory that God had prepared for his people through the resurrection of Christ, he would have never crucified the Christ in the first place. He'd have left him alone. But it's too late, you worthless devil. (laughs) And see, if we could view this life through the resurrection of Christ, nothing could stand in our way. Nothing could stop us from praising him for it. Nothing could stop us from yelling about it. Nothing could stop us from rejoicing in it if we had a revelation of his resurrection. And not just the thought of, yeah, I believe he was raised. No, 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 no. I believe that his resurrection power lives in me. Our lives would look completely different. See, the reason we find ourselves in depression and living with hearts filled with anxiety is because we need a greater revelation of his resurrection. I promise you that. I promise you that. See, we, we, we need to view his resurrection not just as something that has already happened, but rather as something that continues to happen and will continue to happen. See, in John chapter 11, Jesus says this. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Not just I can do resurrection and not just that I will be resurrected. No, no, no. I am. The very essence of who I am is resurrection and life. And so you and I, our end of this is we need to receive and believe in a resurrecting faith that will be displayed to the world through us. His resurrection power flowing through us. Because a resurrecting faith will cause us never to doubt the goodness of God. You know, evangelist Michael Dow said something. He said a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff. But one thing that just stuck with me, and I can't get it out of my crawl. Like, you know what I mean? I can't get it out of me. As he said this, he says, if the enemy can get you to doubt the goodness of God, the whole house will crumble. And isn't that so true? If the enemy can get us to doubt the goodness of God, it all falls apart. To question his goodness. And see, man, if we have this view of the resurrection, we'll never question the goodness of God ever. We need to to view everything in this life through the lens of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Having a resurrecting faith. And see, this is what Paul is trying to get across in this Ephesians chapter 1 text. 18 through 21. When he says this, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. In other words, I pray that you will receive a revelation of the resurrection. Receive a revelation of the resurrection. In order, this is why, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. See, when we view everything through the lens of resurrection, we have hope that nobody else can explain, even though we're going through really difficult times. In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in, somebody shout in, in in his people. Notice he says in, not on, and not to. He says in his people. Meaning simply this. The revelation can live inside of us of the resurrection power of Christ. His resurrection power can live in us. More specifically, he can live in you. A resurrecting faith is supposed to live in you. You know why? So that it flows through you. That's the point. So that his resurrection power will flow through you. Do you know the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Your tongue, my tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. See, we need to be a people who are calling dead things back to life in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. A people who who will see things as though they are and not as though they were. See things from God's perspective instead of our perspective. See, we need to be a people who are speaking to sickness and disease, telling it it has to leave, that by his stripes you are healed. In Jesus' name, we bind you, we cast you. In Jesus' name, you're healed. That call perfect health back to life in our own lives and the lives of those around us, man. If Jesus can 
be resurrected from the grave. He can heal you from whatever sickness you're dealing with. I believe it. I've watched his healing touch in my life time and time again. See, we need to be a people speaking to the addictions in our lives and to the addictions in the lives of those around us. Calling forth the freedom that Christ has for each and every one of us. We need to be a people, man, speaking to marriages, our marriages, and other people's marriages that the enemy is trying to destroy. We got to speak to them things, man, and call them to be reunited and come alive in Christ Jesus. That's the type of people we're to be. We, we need to stop focusing on our problems and start focusing on his resurrection. That's who we are to be as the church. Because his resurrection power lives in us. And so it should be flowing through us. And I've got to be honest with you, man. I'm very grateful for, for a mother that focused on his resurrection and not on the enormity of my addiction. I'm so grateful for my mama. So grateful. See, see, maybe, maybe you're not aware of this. I was a drug addict for 15 years, addicted to heroin for nearly eight years at the worst of my addiction or the height of my addiction, whatever perspective you wanna, you wanna bring to the table. I shot over $300 of heroin every single day. I would rob, cheat, steal, do whatever I had to do to get that drug that had me so bound. And because that's the way I lived my life, I was in and out of jail all the stinking time from the age 18 to 24 until Jesus set me free. And because of that, I was in and out of different drug rehabs over and over. And I can remember professionals literally looking at me and telling me that they would say to me, you were born a drug addict, you'll die a drug addict. Because your daddy was a drug addict, your aunts, your uncles were drug addicts. You, so you're going to live one and you'll probably die, die one. And you'll, you'll, you'll die alone. You'll have absolutely nothing because of your addiction. And, and you know what? The trajectory that my life was on at that point in time, that was the reality of the life I was living. It really was. See, I was dying, and not figuratively. Not like, oh, I feel like I'm dying. Like a man called, like, oh, honey, I'm dying. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Like the flu, right? Man, you know what I'm talking about. Like, oh, my God, oh, my I'm dying. That's not me, though. That's not me. I'm strong. I am the worst, man. My wife hates it when I get sick. She's like, oh, my gosh. She's like, I get sick, and then I got to take care of everything. Yeah, I'm like. Oh, you're tough. <laughs> I don't know. Women's pain thresholds, like up here. I don't know how y'all do it. Like, but you had to because you're bearing kids and doing all kinds of wild stuff. So, but, <clears throat> but listen, man, I'm telling you, I was dying, literally dying. There was multiple times my mother found me overdosed in my apartment, overdosed in a bathroom, laying Many, many times she found me in my bed over to OD. She would come in. I remember my mom, she would come in. She would, she would videotape it for me with needles hanging out of my arm. And the reason why is because when I'd wake up, she'd try to show it to me to hopefully snap me out of it, to say, ooh, I don't want that no more, ooh. But see, the enemy was trying to kill me. And he had a hold of me, and I tell you, I tell him, I'm like, hey, you should have killed me when you had the chance. You screwed up, buster. You screwed up. We're going after as many, as many people who are bound and set them free in Jesus' name. As many people as possible. But see, my mom, my mom, she didn't focus on the problem. She focused on the power of resurrection. And then she would call the dead things back to life in my life. I'm telling you, I can remember waking up out of a stupor. I'd come to, right, sort of in and out of it, all hide up. And I'd have my mom standing over top of me, praying so hard for me, laying her hands on me, praying in the Holy Ghost over me. I remember it. And she'd be shouting at the top of her lungs at that worthless devil, at that addiction, saying, you can't have my son. I gave him to Christ. He's his not yours. So you got to leave him alone and stop tormenting him in Jesus' name. Now, I wish I could say to you that I was grateful at the time that all this was happening, but I wasn't. I was very angry. <laughs> I'd get up and start yelling at my mom. But you know what's funny? The louder I yelled, the louder she prayed. Amen. She didn't stop. She didn't care. Matter of fact, it fueled her. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, I'm touching a nerve now. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, yes, just grind. <clears throat> the harder the enemy fought 
to keep me, the harder she prayed for me. And this woman just never stopped believing and focusing on the resurrection power of Jesus Christ for me. She never stopped speaking life over me. And because the resurrection power of Christ was in her, it flowed through her to me. And so, see, I'm standing here today, saved, set free, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because of the resurrection power in her that flowed through her into me. And now I'm filled with the power of God as well. And trying to give it to as many people as I possibly can. See, Jesus, he delivered me from, from drug addiction over a decade ago, and he he called me to be a pastor of a great church, a growing church, a a church that's literally transforming the world around us. It's amazing, actually, what God's doing through us. It's it's incredible. And not only, though, did, did Jesus make me a pastor, but he also gave me a beautiful wife, a beautiful wife that I love with all my heart. And... You know, I just keep going back to the times that them, them professionals would tell me, you're never going to have no one and nothing. And boy, it causes me to rejoice. Because now we got two beautiful kids. 13-year-old daughter, please pray for me. She's, <laughs> she's a teenager. <laughs> Six-year-old son, Abishai. Oh, praise God. Fast for me. Actually, fast for me for that one. But <laughs> now we love our children, man. It's amazing what God has done in our life. And can I tell you this? The best is yet to come for our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because the resurrection power of Christ lives in us and will flow through us in Jesus' name. And what the enemy has stolen from me, he has to repay me a hundredfold. That's what the Bible says. And I speak it. I declare it every single day. You worthless devil. You stole them years from me. I demand them back in Jesus' name. Because that's what the Bible tells me to do. See, we need to be a people who understand the power that God has given us through his son, Jesus. And and this is what Paul is trying to get across to us, church, in this Ephesians 1 passage. Trying to get across to us. And in verse 19, he says this, and his incomparably great power for us who believe that that power is the same power that rose Christ from the grave. It lives in us. And seated him at the right hand of God the Father in the heavenly places far above all rule, all authority, all power, all dominion, and far above every name that was ever spoken that will ever be spoken. Cancer is a name. Sickness is a name. Uh, Addiction has a name. Divorce has a name. And Jesus is above every single one of those names. It all has to bow at the feet of Jesus and his resurrection power. It can't withstand it. That's the power that God desires for us, that that God desires to possess us. And yes, I said possess, completely overtake us, this resurrecting faith. It needs to be the truth in which we live our everyday lives, church, so that we can be an effective church, so that we can be a powerful church. There's a lot of churches out there, but not many of them with power. And I don't know about you. I don't want to be another church on the block, man. I want to be a church with power because God said so. He said we can have it, and so I declare it. I receive it. I don't name it and claim it. I believe it and receive it. I can't name and claim nothing. I I, I read the Bible, and then I get what the Bible says, and then I receive that thing. So don't get it twisted. Listen to me, church. We We need to get loud about this message that God has given us. We need to be a people shouting about the resurrecting power of God through his son, Jesus Christ, that has saved us and redeemed us and gave us eternal life. And listen to me, I'm gonna close right now. I'm about five minutes too long, actually, but that's okay. Listen to me, if, if you're here today, man, and you're dealing you're dealing with some really difficult things in your life. And I don't mean you're 14 and your boyfriend broke up with you. I'm just saying. Like, that's not real. I promise you he wasn't going to be around anyway. Like, but whatever, anyway, not to get sidetracked. <clears throat> but for real, you're dealing with something really, really difficult. Right? Your peace is being taken. You're, you're feeling depressed and frustrated and angry. Man, God wants me to tell you, stop focusing on the problem. Start focusing on his resurrection. If there's family members that are going through really hard stuff, whether they're struggling with addiction or whatever it is, 
the power of his resurrection is the answer for them. Speak life over them. Pray for them. Don't stop praying for them. Allow the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to flow through you, right into them. And listen, if there's things that the enemy's stolen from you, maybe he's stolen your health, maybe he's stolen your joy, maybe he's stolen your peace, maybe, maybe he's stolen your freedom. Well, I declare today in Jesus' name those things back to life. I speak things as though they are over your life, the way God sees it and the way God says it, not how I see it or you see it. We need a heavenly perspective that sees through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to every issue in this life. And if today you are struggling with an addiction, man, I'm telling you, I'm a walking, talking testimony of what God, what God can do. Because I promise you, if he could do it for me, he'd do it for you. I'm telling you. I run into people from my old neighborhood when I get, go back for Christmas and stuff back home. They're like, you're Keith Deal? No way, he's dead. Like, for real. For real, I've heard several people say that. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> well, actually, actually, the Bible says I'm a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, all things are made brand new. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I am, I am dead. That old man's dead and gone. He's buried. He has no more authority. And look, one, one last thing, man, before we get to the next part of the service, but and if, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, and I'm not talking about coming to church. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm, I'm talking about a real personal relationship with the God who saved you, redeemed you, and has called you out into his, um, into his marvelous light. That's what I'm talking about. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, today's the day. Or maybe you have given your life to Jesus and and man, you just find yourself steering far away from him lately. Maybe it is because of the problems and issues you're dealing with and it's tough to see. And listen to me, you don't need all the answers to who God is. You just need to trust that he is. Amen. That's where it starts. Not, well, I gotta understand this and that and then I'll do this. And not, no, 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 you're missing it. You're missing it. You're missing it. You just come to him exactly how you are. He'll begin to lift you up, give you revelation of who he is. Not because you want to know it, but because he's good for it. It's amazing. And so look, I'm actually not going to have anybody close their eyes today when I do this salvation call. Matter of fact, I want everybody's eyes right on me, looking, looking at me intently. Because you know, when I, was, when I was talking to the Lord, right, about this salvation call, he reminded me of something. He reminded me of the text when Jesus makes this statement. He says, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. And I felt like God wanted to give us an opportunity to show everybody we're not ashamed of the one who saved my soul. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna count to three here. And if... If you've never given your life to Christ, man, the moment I get to three, shoot that hand. Don't think about it. Don't overthink it. Listen, if your heart is pounding right now in your chest, and I know there's people right now, I can feel it. That's God pulling on you. <laughs> Saying today's your day. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Today's your day. And so I'm gonna count to three. And when I get to three, man, just shoot the hand up real quick. Just shoot it up real quick. One, if you've never, ever given your life to Christ. Two, or or you've given your life to Christ, but you find yourself far away from him, or you're just not sure what, what it means to be in relationship with him, I want you to lift your hand, three, right now, in Jesus' name. Yeah, Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you're calling to your people. I thank you that you're revealing yourself to us people and that you're desiring for the resurrection, your resurrection power to flow through us. Lord, I thank you for each and every heart here today. And Lord, if anyone is far from you, I pray today there was a seed planted in their heart, that your word has begun to draw them closer to you. And I thank you for it today, Lord. I thank you for them. And we thank you for your resurrection power that's here 
for us today. Lord, I speak a blessing over your people. Bless them with your spirit in an even greater measure. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap off real quick.